I asked Richard from Video Game Restoration to build me the ultimate Game Boy, but I also challenged him to start with a broken one. So let's see what he comes up with. Steve asked me to build him the ultimate Game Boy. His two major requests were an upgraded screen and a rechargeable battery, but we're gonna go way above and beyond that and make it as best we can. So I paid way too much for this broken Game Boy that came straight from Japan. I did open this briefly just to make sure I wasn't scammed, but I haven't actually given a good look. This is a DMG Game Boy or a Dot Matrix game Game Boy. It's in rough condition. So we're gonna try to fix this and see if we can upgrade the heck out of it. All right, so right off the bat, I'm seeing some corrosion. And funny enough, um, there's moisture inside of this. In the moment of truth, nothing. Nope. Because these battery terminals are so corroded, I'm going to assume that is my issue because uh, the corrosion isn't conductive. So it's basically like putting a sheet of paper between your battery and the contact terminal there. So what I'm going to try to do here is just to kind of bypass those battery terminals to see if it's actually those battery terminals or if there's another problem. So we're gonna try it with our desktop power supply and just bypass those terminals. Now that I'm feeding six volts into this Game Boy via my desktop power supply, we're gonna see if this turns on by just bypassing those battery terminals altogether. Oh, well, we had a power blink. So we had a red light for a second, an audio crack. And it could just be that these terminals are just not gripping too well. We'll try it again though. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so we have a red light, um, but we're not getting anything else other than that. Looking around, I'm not seeing any obvious trace damage. Um, there's no corrosion, like gross corrosion on the board that would lead me to believe that anything else is wrong, but we'll keep poking around and picking at it and seeing what we can come up with. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I've worked on quite a few of these and I've built up a, a quite a stash of piles. I'm gonna try a different front board to see what happens. Now, if it works, then I know the back board is good um, and then we can start focusing on what's wrong with this one. And if it doesn't work, then I know I can isolate all my efforts into the rear board. So we're gonna plug in our backup front board here. Turn on our power supply, make sure nothing's shorted. Everything looks good. Try to keep that out of the way. There we go. And let's see what happens when we turn this board on. Ooh, alrighty. That's a lot of lines. And we're not getting any audio. All right, well, now we know that it is the rear board which unfortunately makes things a little more difficult, but nine times out of 10, not impossible. So let's find out. So I looked through those traces and I didn't see anything wrong. I didn't find any obvious corrosion and everything had continuity. So rather than just one problem, I might just happen to have two separate problems. Like my audio is not working, my screen's not working, two separate issues. So I'm just gonna troubleshoot those today and see if I could find anything wrong. One of the main causes of audio not working um, would be a corroded headphone jack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to listen with headphones and see if I get any audio through them. Um, if I don't, then, you know, we're still back at square one, but we'll see. Nothing. I do get an audio pop and I have that kind of like that audio hum, like the very, very light hum, um, which tells me that the amp and the speaker were both getting power. I'm just not getting audio. So that's a bit of a problem. Okay, so I'm going to use a working screen or a screen that I know is working. So I have lines. So I'm gonna move back to thinking that this might be a singular problem causing both issues. All right, so I'm gonna check some voltages around the board just to make sure everything adds up. Um, if it does, then we're still back at square one or we haven't left square one rather, and we'll just keep moving along and seeing what we can find. There we go. So yeah, we have our six volts in the first one. This one should be without looking, it's gonna be zero. Yeah, cause that's our ground. Uh, this one will be like negative 20 ish. Negative 23, 24, okay. And five, five volts. Okay, so the five volts so it should go to the CPU. So I'm just going to carefully flip this so I don't cross these, zap anything. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Let's see, I'm going to just touch the CPU indicator here. And I have five volts going to the CPU. So that's good, the CPU is getting power. But, we're still at square one. We haven't moved anywhere. 
So I'm just going to start checking random components. Maybe I can find a short and see if anything else is wrong. Nothing. Ooh. Okay, that one's shorted. I'll check the uh, ceramic capacitors. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing there. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to touch random uh, points here that are coming from the CPU and check them to ground to see if we get anything else that shorts out. Okay, so that's another via that shorts to ground. So, so far we have two. There's three that are shorting to ground. There's four. There's five. So we have five different pins coming from the CPU that are shorting out to ground. After finding those shorts to ground coming from the CPU, I'm going to bring out my oscilloscope and I'm going to test a working Game Boy versus the non-working Game Boy to see if I can see any differences coming from the CPU. Now, my knowledge on these isn't the most. I honestly am only able to basically compare a working one to a non-working one in spotting the difference. If you were to compare this to a human thing, this would be like an ECG, which is a heart monitor, probably more so an EEG, which is a brain monitor. Um, definitely not an EGG, which is just an egg. So I'm going to power this one up. This one has Tetris loaded into it. And I'm just going to check some of these pins here. All right, we're getting some waveforms there. We're getting some waveforms there. A couple waveforms there. All right, pin number five. We're getting some waveforms there. Okay, perfect. I have my non-working Game Boy connected, and I'm going to check those same pins. So I have Tetris loaded here. And we have voltage, but we don't have any signals. Again, voltage. No signals. Move to pin number three here. Nothing, no voltage. Pin number four. We have voltage, but no actual waveforms. It's blinking a little bit, but not like the original one was. And it's pin five here. We have voltage again, but no massive waveforms. This board is toast. Uh, it's super dead. We're still getting voltage, but we're not getting a signal. She's done for. I was given this Game Boy as a parts Game Boy, and you can obviously see why. It is severely water damaged with literally corrosion eating away a big chunk of the board here. Um, the back, even worse. It's just almost like almost completely destroyed. However, we have a chip. Everything looks good, but let's plug it in and let's see what happens when we use this. And I'm going to plug in our main board here. Pop in a game, and let's see if this works at all. Okay, nothing on screen. We have a uh, an audio ting though. Now, let's see if it will load a game. Nothing. Let's see if we can solve this one. We'll start at the power board and we'll start working from there. So, at the top of our power rail here, we should be getting five volts, but we are getting Oh, sorry, we should be getting six volts, and it just blinked for a second there. There's six volts. This should be zero. This should be negative 17 to 20. And we have positive 1.5, and then this should be five volts, which it is. Okay, so it looks like we might have a problem with our power board. Conveniently enough, off our broken one here, we can just swap that out, and we are upgrading the power board to a new one, so I could just use that. That came out nicely, so that's our good board. Put that off to the side, and we're gonna pull out our old board or a bad board. It's still not, oh, there it goes. Just took some convincing. Ooh, that's super smoky with that flex. Do, 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 do. So this is the one we want. We're going to put this one in. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of flex. Just the smallest amount. I don't need a lot here. Quickly melt it. Now, there we go. It's not the best soldering job. However, it doesn't need to be because I'm just gonna pull this off eventually anyhow and uh, put on the upgraded one. So we're going to see if we get anything with the new power board installed. I have tons of copies of Tetris laying around just for this. Okay, so power is on. Oh, we have a screen. Perfect. 
I do have a tester cart. I wonder if that will load. Okay, we have a logo this time. Perfect. It booted up. So with this uh, test board that I bought from Natalie the Nerd, I am able to test different components of the Game Boy to ensure that they're all working. As you can see, the screen um, has some lines through it. Super easy fix. We are upgrading the screen anyways, but I will clean this and fix it so I can send it off to Steve so he can do whatever he wants with it, whether he's going to sell it or whether he's going to use it for another Game Boy. So now that we know that we have a working Game Boy, I'm going to try the original screen here. I put on a new speaker just to see if this one's working. We're going to replace it anyways, but if it does work, uh, and we don't have to do any repairs, then I'm just gonna send it back to see if he could do whatever he'd like with it. He could use it in another Game Boy. These can fetch a good price on eBay if he wanted to sell it, so we'll see what happens. We have the Nintendo logo, that's a plus. We have an audio chime, and it booted in my testing cart. So we're gonna do an auto test on here. So it passed the RAM test. Um, it's going to do a screen test. There's no lines in the screen, which is very surprising. Um, it's a very common thing just to happen with these screens over time, especially with this one being as damaged as it was. It's kind of weird. So buttons are working. A and B. We have our left, right, up, down, select and start. Perfect. All those work. This is for a scroll. Oh, missed it. This is our audio test. I think it just froze and it reset. Okay, now I'm not sure if this is a power issue or if this is because I'm moving the screen around. A little weird. And it reset again. Weird. I wonder if the audio control is doing something. It keeps resetting, which is bizarre. So let's test it with the other screen. And I'm just going to see if I can imitate exactly what's happening here where it's going to reset. And yeah, it did the exact same thing. It's reset itself. Okay, let's check our voltages. Actually, you know what it could be? These battery terminals are also very corroded. Um, so I'm going to remove those and maybe do the same thing I did last time where I just solder a wire to it. And I'm just going to give it a generalized cleaning because it is disgusting. It's uh, covered in, in all those blue corrosion. So we'll try cleaning first. And then we'll test all the voltages and remove those battery terminals. There it goes. So there's definitely some corrosion in the terminals here, in the game or the, uh, the cartridge pin. So I'm gonna have to give those a good cleaning. Um, that's definitely why it wasn't reading originally. And maybe the issue still is those uh, those pins there. So let's clean those up as best we can. So I tried cleaning this to the best of my abilities with the corrosion that's in here. Now, I wasn't really able to get in the pin connectors here. It's just really hard to get to and it's just really stuck in there. So there is a ultimate cleaner when it comes to battery corrosion and that is vinegar. So what I'm going to do is submerge half of the board here in vinegar and hopefully that'll eat it away. And while it's doing that, I'm also gonna throw these battery terminals in that are corroded from one from this one and one from the original one and just use the best one. So I'm not sure why vinegar has such a reaction with this battery acid. Look down in the comments. I'm sure someone way smarter than me can explain the chemistry behind it. But as for now, I'm just gonna say it's magic and it works. Now vinegar is not gonna hurt the board in any way, but I do wanna try to keep some of the components out just as a cautionary kind of or just to be cautionary rather. And there we are. So those pins are fully submerged and this doesn't have to sit for long. It's not like an overnight thing. Probably within 10 minutes, I could come back to this and take it all out um, and just give it a good cleaning with isopropyl alcohol. It might still smell like vinegar, but that's okay. I'm gonna move over to the shell now. Now this is obviously pretty dirty. However, it's not very yellowed. Um, the bottom here, a little yellowed, so we might have to do a little bit of retrobriting. We'll kind of play that by ear. But what I need to do for this is cut out some of the picture here because the new screen that I'm putting in is I think 11% bigger. So this will kind of block off some of the screen. So conveniently enough, because this is a transparent shell, I'm going to get my new screen protector. I'm going to just lay it over. And then when I look through the shell, 
I'll be able to see the lines of the cutout and I'll just be able to trace them and then cut them out. Now that I have my screen marked out, I'm going to be able to cut it. Now my cutting doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because any miscuts or any like uh, rough cuts, I guess, will be hidden by the screen protector. I'll be hidden behind that blue. I like to cut these out with a Dremel. There's many ways of cutting these out. You can use a Dremel, you can use a, a crafting knife, um, you can use flush cutters. I just found this the quickest and easiest way. However, that being said, it can be a little dangerous, so we are going to wear our eye protection, just to be sure. Okay, so with the Dremel, I was able to cut out a basic shape here, and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, just get rid of some of these burrs, and I noticed a couple spots where I couldn't really get in the corners, um, so I'm just going to use some flush cutters and try to trim that out, and then I'll move to a crafting knife just to really... Um, clean it up. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we have it lined up. The uh, the screen cutout, which I don't know if it's going to appear on camera there, um, is inside the cutting that I've done on the outside. So that's perfect. So I finished soaking our Game Boy in vinegar, so hopefully that will clean up any corrosion that formed inside the pins. Now we should be able to test the board to see if it's functioning properly. Whoa. Yes! Mm. We got lucky. We got super lucky. But it loads. Okay, let's test everything else then. So let's see the volume here. How high can that go? The volume wheel isn't doing anything at all. Oh yeah, looking at it, there is some dirt that's just kind of built up in there. So we might just have to replace or fix the uh, the contrast wheel. Okay, so we have our new potentiometer wheel. Now, unfortunately, with this new wheel, it's not as nice as the original wheel. It's a lot thinner. However, beggars can't be choosers in this situation. Let's test our volume again. If this doesn't fix it, I'm not too sure where else it would lie, because my first thought would be capacitors, but we've replaced those. That sounds better. We just need some sweet, sweet Tetris music. Oh, come on. Perfect. That was the issue. It was just a dirty contrast wheel or a corroded, rusted contrast wheel. Alrighty, let's move along. So we're going to get our shell and then our new screen. Now I believe I have to modify the shell a bit more than I already have just to really ensure that this uh, screen fits in. And I'm just going to see how this fits in here. Nope, let's go this way. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it'll fit in just like that. Perfect. In order to try to keep dust at an absolute minimum, I'm going to lay this in. There we go. That's connected. Now I believe this is going to feed through like that. There we go. Now what I like to do is face the screen downwards so no particular or particulates rather fall onto it. Shoot, I completely forgot about this part. Now I'm intentionally leaving that thing on there. That way, if I have to pull the screen off because of dust or anything of that like, um, it's not stuck to it. Now, flip this over really quick, and I'm just going to take a peek to make sure that there's nothing underneath the glass. Everything looks all right. Okay, perfect. Continuing on with the front board, I'm going to be installing this LED kit made by Natalie the Nerd. And basically what this is going to do is lay directly over top our buttons and it's gonna light the buttons up from beneath. So before we attach this, we're going to solder on some wires. Now this is meant to go onto a regular board. So the fitment isn't exact when it's coming to this new board and the solder points that would, you would find on an original board obviously aren't on this. So we have to run some wires.
think I could use some that's already on here. There we go. So we're going to tape this down. I just have some double-sided tape here, nothing special. Now, usually this would just solder directly to the board. Once it's all screwed together, it will be held into place by everything else. So this is just basically to help me install it. I'm gonna line this up as best I can. And there we are. Now I'll need to put the speakers, or pardon me, the stickers and everything in as well. But before that, I'm going to clean up the shell as best as I can. And these original letters, I'm going to get rid of. I'm also going to make those blue. And the reason I'm getting rid of all of them, rather than just trying to color match, is one, because I don't think I'll be able to perfectly match the font. I can get close, but if I put two different fonts beside each other, you'll notice right away. But if I have the same font over the whole thing, you won't notice at all. And because I'm eliminating all of the font or all of the original text, I can make it whatever color I want. So why not go with the color theme? So using my caliper, I was able to measure the size of the font here as well as up here to try to match that with a stencil so I can paint them on later. I also measured the size of the plate that the game cart slides into so I can put a nice Tektronix sticker on there. This little doomahickey right here is an audio amp. And this one's unique because it has an adjustable potentiometer so I can either bring up the volume or bring it down to my desired level. Now, a lot of people would think that full blast is probably the best way to go. However, when you crank it way too high, sometimes you get audio interference or it just sounds terrible. So I'm gonna to try to find a happy medium of loud but clear audio. So I have my audio amp wired up here to the best of my abilities. Um, I glued these cords here together just to make it look a little neater. It's mostly gonna be hidden underneath the front board, so it's not gonna matter too much, but I just don't want them flailing out everywhere. So I'm just gonna start running, where, uh, running my wires where they need to go, and we'll go from there. There we are. Now these last wires, we have these two that have to go to the audio board, or sorry, the front board. And then we have two that need to go to the speaker. Now little difficult because we need the front shell or the speaker inside the front shell with that on and i don't want to do that just yet because i really need to clean this up before we go too far so what i think i'm going to do where's the old speaker okay so we need to run our positive and our negative that one's good that one's good now i do have a rechargeable battery here from retro 6 i think they're the only ones that actually make these and I'll have to put the cover on. Fingers crossed, we have audio. There we go. Perfect, ugh, so many little problems. Now, what I want to do this for is to play with the potentiometer here. So the potentiometer right now is my volume control. So the volume's cranked. What I want is like loud, but not drowned out. So that's too good. There's like a, kind of like a ting to the music. I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera. There we go. I think that will do it. Let's listen to the, the Game Boy ping really quick. Perfect, I like it. Okay, audio amps in. Now we can move to the front shell, put it all together and we're done. I'm going to solder on a new speaker. This speaker is from Funny Playing. They're also the same company that made the new front board as well as the new LCD screen here. Now, if we look at the Game Boy itself, we can see that somebody has used something sharp to try to scrape off the G. Unfortunately, it left some deep scratches inside of the Game Boy, so we're going to try to buff those out. I'm going to use a fine grit sandpaper, do a little bit of wet sanding with 50% isopropyl alcohol. I don't want to use full water because I don't want to accidentally have some leak and damage anything electronic, but I don't want to use full alcohol because I just want a little bit more um, time with the, the moisture to really sand those parts out. Okay, so I've removed as much of those scratches as I can. It's not perfect, but it's the best I can do at this time. So I'm going to use a, I think it's a Melophone, but just magic eraser basically. And I'm going to take off the rest of the lettering. And as well, I've kind of clouded the plastic with the Game Boy because of the sanding, unfortunately. So the Melophone is like basically a really, really, really fine sandpaper. You should always think of it as such when you're cleaning. So what I'm gonna do is try to buff out 
any of those micro scratches that I've caused with the sandpaper. And I'm also going to try to take off some of the old lettering. The lettering is now completely gone. I have a little bit of polish here. This is literally just scratch doctor, like an auto body kind of thing. Um, I've used it on plastics pretty much since I started doing this and I've never had an issue. So I'm just going to do little circles here, just kind of polish it up, which should really kind of get rid of any of that cloudiness and just kind of make it nice and transparent once again. Perfect. That's a lot nicer. Okay. So we have clear buttons. These are just conductive pads. Okay, here comes the tricky part. How do I wire this all together now? All right, again, oh, it's just awkward. Here we go, here we go, this is it. This is it. That's it. That's it. Hmm. Okay, where's the screws? I need screws. <laughs> Anytime you're putting screws into plastic, Turn counterclockwise first until you feel or hear a pop. And then you know you're in the uh, the original threading, so you don't cross-thread it. Yeah, let's try that again. See how loud that jingle is? That's good. I like it. You don't want it overpowering. And let's adjust the screen. So as you can see, it's a yellow screen, but we have color change, so it doesn't really matter. That one's easy to see. I'm going to hold in the button. And we can move this to our vertical position here. And we're going to scroll, scroll, scroll until that's centered. Uh, nope, not yet. That looks... I'd say that's the ticket right there. Perfect. And while we're here, there's a pixel effect that I can put on um, that, you know, just kind of gives you more of a retro feel if you wanted that. So clear picture, retro picture, your choice. You can have a battery display to see how much juice you have left, which comes up in the top left. Uh, and of course, you can adjust your color from here, or you can adjust your brightness from here as well. Perfect. Now that our screen is centered, let's put it all back together. And this Game Boy is finally done. Tronix Fix asked me to make this Game Boy. And when he asked, how long do you think it's going to take? And I was like, two hours tops. That was two months ago. Well, folks, that is it for me. I am so glad you joined me for this journey. Steve, thank you so much for the opportunity to build you your ultimate dream game gear. I hope you really, really enjoy it. I've got the box with the Game Boy from Richard. I have not seen this in person yet, so let's open it up and check it out. I'm super excited to see this. I think, is that snacks I saw? Oh my goodness. I might be more excited about the snacks. Just kidding, I'm kidding. We've got a Mr. Big Coffee Crisp Glossette Raisins, Black Forest Cake, Macintosh's Creamy Toffee, Swedish Berries, and Thrills. It still tastes like soap. That should be interesting. Okay, I had no idea he was gonna send all this candy, but thank you so much, Richard. That's awesome. Now let's get to the, whoa, even more? Dude, you're gonna make me fill out this t-shirt of yours. Okay, let's get all the candy out and then have a look. I'm assuming the Game Boy's in here, so let's open this up and check it out. Okay, I am so excited to see this thing. It's packed in there pretty well. Wow, look at this. So, we ready? Even got a little desiccant pack. I feel like this is like pro level packaging right here. Wow, look at that. That is so nice. All nice and clean. Nice new screen protector on here. Look at that, he's even got my logo on there. That is so cool. Okay, and we've got the USB-C charging. That's one thing specifically I asked for. That's amazing. Okay, let's turn it on though. See if it's got enough charge to turn on. Oh, uh, look at this. Got the matching blue LEDs. That screen looks so good. And we've got the changing color screen. And the contrast changes. This is so nice. 
Okay, let me put a game in and let's try and play a game. We're gonna go with some Donkey Kong. Let's try it out. This is just so fancy. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, here we go. So much easier to see everything. Oh, so much easier to see myself die. Okay, that's enough playing for now. I do want to check one more thing. I want to see this thing charge. And here we go, plugging in the charger. Of course, we got a blue LED. This thing is awesome. All the LEDs are blue, the buttons are blue. Such a cool Ultimate Game Boy. Richard, I think you knocked it out of the park. Thank you so much. If anybody else wants to check out my stuff, I'm on YouTube here under Video Game Restoration, TikTok, Instagram. I'm also on Twitter, website, videogamerestoration.com. Um, and until then, let's save the consoles. There was a lot of Richard's footage that we had to cut out of this Ultimate Game Boy build. So if you want to see a longer version of this video, I'm going to put a link up on your screen to that over on Richard's channel. So go check it out if you want to see more of a full story behind this build. Thanks so much for watching today. I've got some Donkey Kong to play and a whole bunch of candy to eat. And I hope you have a good one.